Welcome to this Christmas Eve service with Connect.Faith. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Rejoice, for Christ's presence lives among us and brings light to our world. Amen. in that same region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night then an angel of the lord stood before them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid for see i am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to you is born this day in the city of david a savior who is the messiah the lord this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying on a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Brian, and I cannot wait to share with you the project that I made this month. It's become something of a tradition at these Connect.Faith holiday videos that I bring a project I recently completed. We talk about what went into it and, and use it as a metaphor to talk about a particular part of the human experience during the holiday. And the project this month are these homemade wind chimes. And I found as I was going through the project to build the wind chimes that you need four things. First and foremost, you need a song, a song that you want the wind chimes to sing. When it comes to the song, like most musical questions that I have, I called my friend Evan Klosser. And in talking about the way that we would voice the wind chimes, they actually directed me to the website of a wind chime manufacturer called The Music of the Spheres. They have a ton of different types of wind chimes that play different songs at different pitches. They have all sorts of voicings. And in listening through them, I was really drawn to one song in particular, the song that was really calling to me. And so I've decided that my wind chimes would be based on this scale. The next step in the process then was to take the notes of that scale for the song that I had chosen and tune the individual wind chimes to the notes. In order to tune the wind chimes to the correct notes in the song that spoke to me, I used a resource from an engineer, an incredible DIY homemade wind chime enthusiast, a man called Lee Height, who has a encyclopedic website for everything you need to know about making homemade wind chimes. Most of what I did here was based on his work. And he has a spreadsheet that will tell you, based on the material you've chosen, the wall thickness of the actual tubing, and the note that you want to play, how long the wind chime should be, and then critically, how far down the chime you should suspend it in order to make sure that it rings out as musically as possible. And so I used thin wall steel conduit and cut it down on a portable bandsaw, used some rasps and grinders to make sure that everything was nice and clean and in tune and then drilled the holes for the support lines. In order for a chime to ring out most clearly, it needs to be supported and it needs to be supported in a fairly precise way. So for these wind chimes, I created the wooden holder as well as a wooden knocker and then used monofilament line and some heat shrink tubing to secure 
the chimes at just the right height to allow them to fully resonate the note of the song. Finally, number four, the wind. The wind chimes are complete. I am so happy with how they look, but there's still something missing. We need the wind, the wind to come and blow in and through the wind chimes so they can resonate deeply the note of the song that I've chosen. They need the wind to bring them to life and to let them serve their purpose, bringing beauty to the neighborhood. Right at the height of winter, when the days are the shortest and the nights are the longest, when the weather is the most dreary and punishing and unforgiving, many faith traditions offer a sign a promise that there is hope to come. And it may come in the form of an oil lantern that keeps burning or a child born in a manger. But for those people of faith, that sign is an urging to keep going, to press forward, to continue on to a time of new life and of new hope. And when I think about what that promise looks like for me today, I find myself needing the same thing these wind chimes need. First and foremost, I need to find the song that I want my life to sing, the song that's calling out to me, that's reaching out directly to my heart. Then I need to do the hard work tuning myself to the notes of that song. I probably won't use power tools or a bandsaw, but I do need to do the work of reflection and examination that will allow me to be tuned so that I'm singing out the notes. I need a support structure to help me resonate, help those notes ring out most deeply. And most importantly, I need the wind the breath, the spirit, whatever it looks like to blow in and through me, to bring me to life. My Christmas wish for you is the same. May you find the song that you want your life to sing. May you tune yourself to its notes. May you have the support structure that allows you to ring out, boldly proclaiming your song. And may the wind or the spirit or the breath, whatever it looks like for you, come blow through you and bring you to life anew. As ever, I hope that you will be well, you will try hard, and you will do good. The world, the world needs you to do good. It was the once lawyer from Dr. Seuss's The Lorax who said, unless, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. I'll see you next time.
The spirit of Christmas, it's the best part for many people. The part where people are just a little nicer. The town I live in stops collecting money for parking meters in December. Oh, I know, that's about capitalism, making it easier for people to shop local. But it just feels nice, you know? Like there's a different spirit in the air. Like something is going on that is lifting up the way of peace and trying to make it a different world for us to live in, at least for a little while. When those shepherds got disturbed in the middle of the night, it wasn't just people being a little nicer. It went deeper than that. It was angels with news that was too good to be true, coming to them, the night shift workers, the people who spent their time awake while the rest of the world was sleeping. Suddenly the invisible people were seen and they were being told about a baby who would rise up to see them and people like them forever. There is a story, a true story about the cellist of Sarajevo. It's about how when terrible bombing and destruction was happening in his world, he showed up with the gift he had to give. He wasn't a doctor or a nurse. He wasn't a soldier or a politician. He was a musician. And the gift he brought was to play his cello, to play the pain he saw in front of him, the grief, the loss. He played it out on the street corners of his town. He played a melody that helped people who were hiding in the darkness feel seen. He helped people know that they were not alone in their grief. Through the wind, the music traveled. Through the air, the notes resounded. And with that gift of wind and music came a spirit of healing, capable of touching their trauma and bringing peace beyond peace into their hearts again. This Christmas, May we hear the good news that it is too good not to be true. May we hear the music that meets us where we are and heals our hearts so that we too can sing again. Amen. the hope and peace and joy and love of this Christmas be with us all. And may we know that the love of God and the grace of Christ Jesus and the communion of the Holy Spirit is around, within, and surrounding us every day. Amen. Amen.